Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Beck, and welcome to my show called It's Not About Us, because as we all know, it's not. It's about God in heaven and, and the directives that, you know, Jesus left for us. And, you know, we have a purpose, a great purpose. And, you know, there's a lot of evil out there right now that's um, interfering in that purpose. And our show is here to share wonderful people that... Um, can tell you about some of the good things that we're all working on in, in the country to make things better. And today, you're really blessed, audience, to have a really, really great person who works very closely with our, our president, President Trump, and his name is Cash Patel. Cash, welcome. Elaine, it's wonderful to see you. It was great to see you here in Las Vegas when President Trump was here just a few weeks ago. So it's, it's good to do a double take. Yeah, it is. And, and it was really a lot of fun um, being there. You know, I've only ever seen uh, Vegas as a uh, just, you know, an entertainment industry. <laughs> and so going up there to see President Trump and to meet with all of my favorite people that are working so hard like yourself, Cash, to make this outcome for the uh, vote in November to be correct and right and safe is just, it's so powerful. I, I find it hard. I want to describe to the people how powerful it really is, but it's really hard to, you know, get that across. Yeah. So could you share with them um, how things are going uh, according to Cash Patel with the um, with what's happening with with uh, the voting and all that kind of stuff. Well, I can, uh, but I'll preface that statement as being a Las Vegas guy and a Las Vegas resident that uh, the bookmakers might not want to listen to me. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, I I I don't do polls. I do the ground game. I, yeah. I travel throughout the country like you do. I speak with the president and sometimes I attend events for him. And to me, the be best measure is, is the audience, is the recipients, is the communication and feedback you get. And I believe what President Trump said here in Las Vegas and Nevada just two weeks ago, that if he and we win Nevada, we win the whole thing. And I totally agree with that because Nevada is sort of this sort of state that captures independent voters and Democrats that are flocking towards President Trump because of his great policies. And that is a microcosm of what's going on throughout the other 49 states. Yes. And, it, and President Trump has never won Nevada. So I, I do believe that if we can deliver Nevada for him and the sentiment on the ground is pretty simple. And President Trump's messaging was was amazingly strong and powerful, especially in a state like this, where he said, if you don't want your tips taxed, vote for me. I mean, in, <laughs> in a state that has Vegas and Reno right. and has more casinos and service industry workers than anywhere in the U.S. combined, that is a powerful message that Joe Biden could have rolled out, but he didn't. And now it's our job to message that out to everybody and everywhere because other states also obviously have waiters and waitresses and oh. bartenders and bartenders and managers and restaurants and hotels and all that stuff, right? Sure. And so that's the ground game I'm seeing resonating. President Trump is connecting with people, not just at the big money level, but the everyday worker. And I think that's super powerful. Well, you know, I was in the service industry most of my life and, and it's really powerful for me because uh, the industry that I was in was in housekeeping. And so often those people are overlooked on tips even. Yeah. And so I always encourage everybody when I get an opening like this to remember when you go to that hotel and stuff, leave something for those housekeepers. Yeah. You know, they work hard and they're the ones that really make you comfortable and clean and safe. So, you know, don't forget them. And, and you're right. You know, um, I, I can honestly say, I can't think of one person who went to college that didn't go out and do service work of some kind to make enough money to have ends meet to go to school. You know, yeah, I did it. <laughs> right, right. You know, they were either the housekeeper, the janitor, the waitress, the waiter, you know, uh, something in that industry so that they could get that money and, and when you know that their tips are being taken 
and a lot of them are taken by the industry. The people mm -hmm. who own the, mm -hmm. the businesses pocket a lot of the tips of yep. the, that the people get, or they disperse it to people that didn't earn it. They earned it. They should have it. So I'm, I'm like a lot of people who um, travel a lot, like you, and so we try and leave tips wherever we go because in cash so that they don't have to worry about um, sharing it with other people when they earned it. So yeah. there's so much to be said for that. And again, you are so right, as always, Cash, that President Trump cares about everyone. And he's looking out for everyone at every level. And I respect that so much as I do everything that he does. So um, what else do we need to know that can you give us any insight? Come on. These people want want some hope here. I, well, I think the, I think we've got better than hope. Hope was Obama's strategy. That's not a strategy. We actually have a plan. Love it. Trump. We have the Agenda 47 plan. And listen, no presidential candidate has been more vociferous about what his policy is going to be than President Trump. I mean, he puts out videos almost every day. Right. And everything from health care to education to the border to the economy to Russia to China uh, to the U. I mean, at literally every square inch of the political landscape is covered by this man. He's not just saying, I'm going to help. He's literally laying out a detailed plan. And of course, the mainstream media is ignoring it because all they're saying is, oh, Joe Biden's not Trump. He's going to do the opposite of Trump. Well, how's that worked out for the United States of America? And I don't even mean from a Republican and Democratic standpoint. I mean, how is the invasion on the border going? Now, we just found mm. out yet again another tragic murder and rape of a mother yes. of five in Maryland. Yes. Secretary Mayorkas was asked yesterday on TV, you know, is this your fault from your Homeland Security's policies? And he said, no, that is disgustingly offensive. Yes, it uh, is. To, to every single American. I mean, look, you're talking to the son of immigrants who emigrated here lawfully. We want the American dream out there for everyone, but we waited in line and I want everybody else to lawfully immigrate into this country because that's the dream. I don't want illegals coming here and snatching away the dream from Americans. I don't want a mom of five to be murdered and raped. I don't want Lake and Riley to be killed while she's out jogging. I don't want people in Las Vegas shot by illegals because they're walking down the street. And unfortunately, this border state thing is now every state. And so well, the message to Americans is you got to get out there. Right. Well, you know, the the um, the other party uh, are the ones that um, we have to stop and remember. President yeah. Trump wants to help people by giving them opportunity. Yeah. President Biden wants to enable a lot of people that have no rights to be here and they have no right to anything that all of you have worked hard for. And he wants to enable them to vote, to enable them to have whatever they want. So they're handing stuff out to them. When you mm -hmm. enable people, the Bible says that does not make them strong. It does not make them right. It does not give them rights. We have to help people by helping them find a way to work for what they have. Mm -hmm. And that's what the American people are asking for. We have to get rid of this whole idea of bringing other people in when we can't even take care of our own people because they're being neglected by the government that's in, in office right now. That is sinful, totally sinful, and we need to speak up about it. You're right. No, the, look, the, the Democrats have for decades bought the minority vote in this country yep. by giving them handouts. I'm that's a minority. Right. I don't want a handout. I want to live the American dream. I want to work my tail off for my family. Yeah. And just like every other guy that and gal that I know, that's what we think the American dream is. I don't want my, I paid for my law school on my own. I don't want Joe Biden's handout to wipe out my student debt so other American families can pay for it for the next 50 years. That's, that's just patently offensive. It and is. now what the Democrats are doing since Donald Trump has securing the minority vote day after day and how he's shown America that 
Joe Biden's wiping out of student debt is unconstitutional, and the Supreme Court has said so, they're moving on to their third tranche, their third group. Now the Democrats want to go out and flood the zone with illegal immigrants and give them the right to vote so that on election day, not that they show up and vote, but that they, the Democratic machine, goes out and gets all their ballots right. and votes for them, essentially. And so right. we have to educate Americans on this, especially minorities, we have to go out there and collectively educate them and say, look, they said they were going to give you a thousand bucks a month. What does that do for you? Nothing. They said they're going to wipe out your student loan that you know who that harms your next generation of minorities. That's and right. You know, all these immigrants who came here lawfully, if you want to go empower the illegal ones, you know what that does to you? They take your jobs, your family security and your family's money. And I think it's a very powerful message that Donald Trump has laid out brilliantly across the country. And it resonates not just with minorities, it resonates with Americans because no one in this country wants a handout if you actually believe in the American dream. That's right. And and you, you always put things so succinctly. It's one of the things I enjoy about visiting with you. And so I'm really grateful you're sharing all this with my audience because they need to hear these powerful words and understand that the better way is always going to be President Trump right now. I mean, I really feel, and I told him this personally on stage a few weeks back, you know, God designated him. God chose him to do oh. what only he can do in this country, and that's be the man that is willing to take all of the hate and the anger and the, the ugliness that is dished out, dished out to him and stay strong and stand for the people. He's not gonna bow down. He's not gonna turn his back. He's not gonna walk away. He's not gonna uh, play their game. He's not gonna kowtow to you know, all of their wants and desires in order to get in office. He's gonna get in there and he's gonna make it reality. Oh. And, and that reality is gonna be so treasured by the people in this country that right now feel like they've been beaten and, and just brought down to their knees because they can't afford to take care of their families, they can't afford gas in their cars, they can't afford food for on the table. I mean, it is just singularly the greatest thing that God could give us was a man like Donald Trump who has that wherewithal and intelligence and knowledge and wisdom that we pray for him every day, that he can do all these things. And we're just so grateful, aren't we? Uh, we are blessed to have a, a, a warrior mm. um, who could have just exited the stage. He doesn't need this. No. His family has been, you know, politically destroyed with disinformation campaign after disinformation campaign. His wealth has been attacked. The unconstitutional civil and criminal cases against him are draining his financial resources. But this man continues to fight, not for himself. And I ask him this all the time, and I know you do too. When I was in his administration and then after we left and every every week since, sir, why are you doing this? Why, why don't, you know, we you did enough, in my opinion, don't get me right. wrong, I think he did incredibly well for us in the first administration. Why are you doing this again? And and people in the mainstream media, of course, won't believe this. So it's our job to message it because you and I talk to him and he literally tells this to us. Right. He literally says, Cash, this is America we're talking about. There is too much at stake for our future generations. I am not, not going to lay down and bend the knee to the deep state government gangsters. And God bless them for that because there's nobody else that could fill that man's shoes. No. And whether you personally dislike a social media post or what have you, now's the time to put your big boy pants on and say, was your family better kept and well looked after during the Trump administration or today in Joe Biden's America? And uh. the answer is simple on that one. If people look at themselves in the mirror and look at the cost of eggs, peanut butter, milk, and gasoline, look at the security and the narco trafficking flowing into our communities and killing our children, look at the evasion on the southern border, and the fact that Joe Biden launched two world wars on his watch, two, Right. The Democrats allow two world wars to watch on his watch, and they want more of our blood and treasure overseas in another Afghanistan. And the only person that's secured against all of that was Donald Trump. They know it, and it's our job to message our communities that they know it from now until Election Day. Well, you know, Cash, I'm going to wrap up this session because we're going to do another one with you. I want everybody to be able to get the full picture of the strength that we have going for us as long as we stick with Donald Trump our precious president. And um, so uh, 
as time allots, we're going to end this show let, and let everybody know, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you right. for taking this to heart and spreading it to your neighbors, family, friends. Tell them to watch it. You can always go to ElaineBeck.com and send that out to your family and they can watch it anytime. We're not, you know, a one man band show where we're only <laughs> on at a certain time and that's it. We have the, the wherewithal and the knowledge and the wisdom to have this online at any time anybody wants to hear. So if you need, if you need to feel good, go to ElaineBeck.com and look at all the wonderful things people are doing. And we will be um, with you. You know, we always pray for you. So God... Mm -hmm.